Hello everybody, this is um, Danelle Films and Photography and today I am at the old Jersey Central Railroad Terminal on the waterfront in Jersey City, New Jersey. The terminal was built in 1889 by the Central Railroad of New Jersey Railroad and was used up until 1967. The reason for this was because the Jersey Central had ferry boats which would take passengers from Manhattan to this station. Starting in the late 60s, the Jersey Central started losing money, so they created the All Dean Plan. The All Dean Plan was basically a plan to abandon the Central of New Jersey terminal and build a connection between the CNJ and the Lehigh Valley at All Dean, just outside Cranford and Roselle Park. CNJ trains would then go over to Lehigh Valley to Hunter Interlocking in Newark, where they'll take the old Lehigh Valley connection to access Pennsylvania Railroad's Northeast Corridor to get to Newark Penn Station. There, passengers had the option to transfer to a Pennsylvania Railroad train to get to New York rather than the ferry boats. You could say this was the beginning of the end for the CNJ Main Line east of Cranford. Freight service still ran in 1967 and the only passenger service that ran on that portion of the line was the Bayonne Cranford Shuttle. Through freight ended in the 70s just prior to Conrail, and then the Bay on Cranford shuttle lasted until 1978. After that, the CNJ main line was only kept in use so they could access Elizabeth Port shops. The New Jersey Department of Transportation, later after 1983 New Jersey Transit, would run these special shop trains from Raritan to Elizabeth Port and back. In the early 90s, the e-port shops finally closed after New Jersey Transit built their Meadows Maintenance Complex near Kearney. After that, Conrail pulled up most of the rails except for one track, which was left to rust. If you didn't know any better, and you passed along South Avenue through Roselle, you wouldn't think that once a mighty train line ran through there. However, on Linden Avenue and Roselle Park, you could still pass over the track that Conrail left. And you can see an old, rusty, unused signal bridge. My friend Christy told me that she always was confused when she passed over that crossing. She felt the tracks but always wondered why she saw no trains. Along this display section of track is an old New Jersey Transit caboose that was probably used for work trains, a boxcar whose heritage is unknown, and an appropriately displayed Central Road of New Jersey baggage car. As you can see now, I'm right on the waterfront. These docks here are where the Jersey Central ferries used to dock and let off passengers to go to the trains. Back when it was in use, this part was not exposed. It was actually covered. I then made my way inside the station waiting area. It still technically is a waiting area because ferries for Ellis Island and the Statue of Liberty depart from near here. I then walked out to where the platforms was. It's amazing to think what this place looked like in the, in the years between 1940 and 1967, where you can see many famous trains, such as the Queen of the Valley, Blue Comet, the Royal Blue, and the Crusader. Displayed by the tracks are old passenger train posters for passenger trains that used to stop here, some I've already mentioned. Here's a look at them. I then walked around the front toward the parking lot and just imagine all the locomotives running to and fro. RDC bug cars, FM train masters, Camelback steam locomotives, Pacifics, 
Baldwin's Witchers, and others. At the other end of the park, I found a very interesting vessel. This is a light ship, and they basically have the same function as lighthouses. They're to warn ships away from dangerous areas. On May 15th, 1934, a light ship similar to this was struck by the RMS Olympic, which is a sister to the famous Titanic that sunk in 1912 after striking an iceberg. The collision sunk the light ship and it killed seven of her crew. The last use of light ships altogether was in 1985. Walking back towards the terminal, I saw a cruise ship. The Hudson River has a lot of great boat action. People on jet skis, sailboats, ferries, and yachts. Before I left, I went to get one more look inside the old CNJ station, and I also took another look at the model of the Blue Comet they had on display. To end our program, I'm going to show you the Blue Comet running on my fictional Southern United Railroad from my Southern United Railroad series. If you watched my previous episode of the Southern United Railroad, you'll notice that the Blue Comet actually made a cameo. The whole train appeared while Larry, Emily, and Chrissy were having their conversation at the beginning of the episode and just the engine cameos at the end when Larry apologizes for wrecking their train. I threw it in there because the Blue Comet is one of my favorite passenger trains. I also do the same thing with the Southern Pacific's version of the city of San Francisco. You will first see the Blue Comet departing South Plainsville, then passing through Denville. You'll then see it on Piscataway Hill with FE Unit Diesel Helpers. After that you'll see it pass a new location that hasn't appeared in any episodes yet, which is Gateway Junction and the nearby Basquiel Bridge. Following that you'll see it at Winslow Junction. You'll then see it pass along the shoreline pulled by F units to show what it might have been like had the Blue Comet lasted into dieselization. And our final shot would be the Blue Comet pulled by its famous Blue Pacific at sunset along the shoreline.
you all for watching. Make sure you look out for the newest Southern United Railroad episode coming out July 3rd. Goodbye for now.